FY22 earnings conference call of Kaplan Point Laboratories Limited, hosted by Monarch Network Capital. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in lesson only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask question after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference has been recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Vinit Gala from Monarch Network Capital. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, thanks, Rekha. Hello, everyone. On behalf of uh, Monarch Network Capital, I would like to thank uh, the management of Captain Point Labs for giving us this opportunity to host the Q2 and H1 uh, FY22 earnings conference call. Today, we have with us the senior management team from uh, Captain Point Labs, uh, including Mr. C.C. C. Parthipan, chairman of the company, Dr. Sridhar Ganeshan, Managing Director, Mr. Vivek Parkiban, uh, Chief Operating Officer, Mr. D. Murli Dharan, uh, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. M. Satyanarayan, Deputy CFO. I would now like to hand over the call to the management team for the initial comments. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. We are pleased to welcome you to our earnings call for Q2 and H1 FY22. Please note, uh, note that a copy of our disclosures is available on the investor section of our website as well as the stock exchanges. And please do note that anything said on this call which reflects our outlook towards the future or which could be construed as a forward-looking statement must be reviewed in conjunction with the risk that the company faces. With that, I would like to hand over the floor to our chairman for his uh, opening statement, please. Good evening. Welcome all to our earnings call. My colleagues will talk on the numbers and ratios, hence I would like to talk, touch base on the following. Insulis products, markets, and model. We have been registering differentiated products in our existing market in the following area, namely CNS and CVS. Second, oncological products. Third, specialty injectables for hospital division. You already identified the marketing team from India, which will take care of the brand marketing in the areas of CNS, CVS, ANCO, and specialty injectables. Some of the employees have already reached there, and others are waiting for the visa. The important point here is that the number of competitors for this type of products and uh, brand marketing only from the multinational companies and from one or two local companies. This would also create a separate revenue stream in one or two years in the existing markets to our company. We are also registering more generic products in the existing markets, which again strengthens our presence and customers feel happy to note that we have different buckets of products that created a huge basket available to them. On the other side, we are registering products in mid-size markets such as Chile, Peru, Colombia, and Costa Rica. We have already started exporting small consignments, and this would increase in the due course. We have plans to register our products in Brazil, and we already obtained the online approval from Anvisa Brazil. The next big opportunity for Kaplan Point is Mexico because of the size of the market and its proximity to the Central American countries where we are a strong player now. We received one registration from Mexico. We will be able to increase the registration and also start good business once the travel restrictions are lifted. Further, it will not be out of place to mention about Venezuela. We received a transfer of $4.5 million in the last three months. We also exported $3 million worth of goods in the last three months. Since the crude price has gone up, we sincerely foresee larger opportunities from Venezuela. We have also started registering our products to more than 10 countries in Asia and Africa, where our presence is not there currently. We further identified CIs is a greater opportunity for injectables, both general injectables and oncology. We have shortlisted two candidates who have very good exposure in CAS markets. The CEO of the company will talk of our activities in CSL and the US market. Now, let me look at the people and projects. 
we have been recruiting people with hands on experience from bigger companies our attracting is of helps us to attract and retain our talent pool which is very important at this juncture we witness a change in the mindset and skill set of our old and new of our company which is very important also for the growth of our company further we are creating a separate team to train the new entrants for necessary skill sets that will also help the company to grow in future coming to projects there is an ongoing second phase in csl which again the coo will brief it we also have four projects two are api and two are for the formulation one api is for the us fda project and the other one for the oncological product and we already bought land of 19 acres in an industrial estate where we are planning to start the construction for both the api projects and the formulation project we call it as caplin on co in an industrial estate called kakulur where we bought where we bought a building in 120000 square feet and we are going to start caplin on co tablets to start with and the machinery is for which have already been placed and we are expecting the machinery from germany by march or april of 2022 since there is more space in the form of a second phase in the existing building we have uh, plans to either go for a osd project or a pnm injection especially the eta pnm where there is a huge opportunity in the international market however we found a recent opportunity in the form of acquiring a osd plant with uk uk mhra and the discussions are on we are very narrowly missed an opportunity of acquiring a us fda api plant which the co will brief it but we also have some challenges such as ocean freight and the transit time to our destinations the ocean freight has increased four times we used it used to be in the region of 3000 and 4000 dollars which has gone to 16000 to 20000 dollars the transit time used to be 30 to 45 days which has gone up to 3 to 4 months restrictions on our travel due to covid pandemic has also you no know, disturbed to certain extent you no know, expansion of the markets however our existing business has been has not been impacted in a big way except the delay in commissioning the second injectable plant sorry second injectable line in caplin stores and also an increase inventory in transit finally you are aware that we have enough cash reserves we also have maximum products registered in row markets and regulated markets such as us and other places although it is not huge numbers we have already started we have already uh, started our presence in the regulated markets we have found, we further have enough products in pipeline and uh, wap stages in some of the regulated markets like us brazil and mexico we also have the right people to manage our facilities and marketing and our current projects are in various stages of completion hence we are confident of creating many milestones in the years to come today caplin is a metaphorical butterfly flaps its wings fly to larger markets from smaller markets and the larger markets are going to be in south and north america thank you thank you very much thank you chairman uh, now i'd like to give a little update on uh, caplin sterile which is our uh, regulated market injectable uh, facility we've been making a uh, fairly good progress in the last few months um, uh, with more product launches and also completing more uh, exhibit batches now that we have two fully functional uh, uh, manufacturing lines and also a third uh, ophthalmic line uh, in total we have about uh, 17 approvals out of 20 that has been filed of the 17 12 were in caplin sterile's name and 5 were under partners name and out of the 17 only two more products are to be launched which will happen sometime by uh, january and uh, february of uh, next year um all of the launch products we have seen uh, high single digits to low double digits kind of uh, market share and we constantly 
uh, work with our partners to improve this market share to sort of 15, uh, 16 percent, which is a very good uh, space to be because many of these are simple solution products. Uh, we're in the process of doing exhibit batches, etc., for uh, uh, the more complex products which fall under the emulsion and suspension category. That will happen in the next uh, 12 or months. Um, when we are talking about uh, uh, the partners, we've been working with the with the large companies in the U.S. in the in the uh, past. Now we are slowly uh, evolving our business model to work with a distribution uh, kind of a concept, where we are working with a company uh, uh, that is, you know, very well established in terms of uh, injectable sales in the U.S. They know the right kind of channels. They know the right. Uh, uh, buying group, etc., and uh, this will be a precursor for our entry into uh, the U.S., which uh, most likely will happen by 2023. Um, we are also in the process of, uh, in fact, we've already started exporting uh, products to non-U.S. markets from this site, uh, with the first uh, exports happening to Mexico and uh, UAE in the past uh, three months, and we expect this business to slowly grow as well. And apart from U.S., we have already filed uh, three products in Canada in the last uh, few months, and uh, three more will be filed in uh, the next uh, one or two quarters. So we expect there to be some traction before end of 2022 when it comes to Canada. Um, in terms of uh, a front end, as I was saying, 2023, uh, we feel that there should be close to 25 pandas under our belt with uh, a few more under uh, the pipeline which has been uh, filed as well. So we think that would be a good time for us to launch our own label in the U.S. And uh, by which time we also would, uh, would understand uh, what are the tier 2, tier 3 kind of buyers that we should be targeting rather than going after um, uh, very large buying groups which uh, might not happen in the initial uh, period. Um, I'll also give you a little uh, background into our expansion plans. We are in the process of putting together a pre-mix bag line. This is a very niche uh, area. Uh, I believe in India only three, four people are in this uh, uh, concept, and we would like to be one of them. And we feel that this could be completed by January of uh, 2022, and we can start taking uh, trial batches the next month onwards. We already have completed development of seven products uh, in the premium bag line. Um, we are also working on the much larger uh, uh, CapEx operation of phase two of our uh, injectable plant, which will house two uh, high-speed wire lines, which we will be placed with Bosch in uh, Germany, one refill syringe line with Stel line in uh, Italy, and a lyophilizer from uh, Toflon. All of these will uh, start to come through before end of next year. We hope to have all of the machines uh, and lines qualified and ready for commercials by early 2023. Um, once this is completed, we would be in a position to take up much more uh, quantum of CMO projects uh, in addition to all of the own projects that we will be doing. And we are also putting together the right infrastructure to take uh, complex products such as amphotericin, uh, liposome, propofol, enorphoparin, et cetera, uh, that will uh, uh, that will be global projects as well because we also want to reduce our dependence on uh, one single market. Which uh, even though our uh, maximum focus is towards the uh, U.S., we also want to make sure that there are additional uh, lines of revenue that happen in the in the coming few years. Um, finally, I would also like to touch upon uh, uh, the automation. Uh, processes that we've been taking on, uh, especially in terms of testing, manufacturing, uh, documentary control, compliance, all of this, we want to make sure that we have maximum level of uh, automation at the plant to the extent where we have a target within the next few years to become as close to paperless as uh, possible. We are heading in the right direction. Uh, this is uh, an initiative that is very much appreciated by uh, the regulators as well, and we want to be ahead of the curve when it comes to that. Um, that, that's uh, most of the, the you know, developments over the last few months. I will just hand over the uh, floor to uh, Mr. Murli Dhan, our CFO, for a quick review of the numbers for this quarter, please. Uh, good afternoon. This is Murli Dhan. Welcome you once again for this conference call. So the numbers are available to you for the couple of hours. Uh, the, the, the numbers, let, let me 
briefly touch upon on all parameters all ratios the company has done uh, well uh, be it the growth in sales which is 20% or gross margin or ebitda all the ratios are better compared to the previous quarter and the previous year as well the chairman has mentioned about the challenges in terms of transit freight costs and other things fortunately we have been able to pass on maximum portion of the increased cost to customers such that our contribution margins have not suffered and the inventory increase in the warehouses has helped us to realize them in quick sales and also convert them into cash the profit margins have not suffered much because of the increase in freight and the return but there are increases in offset because of this freight cost increase uh, for certain customers you have to absorb the freight Uh, from CAS to FOB or converted to orders, that is increasing. Even though the cost ability terms have gone up, as a percentage of sales, it has remained more or less same. Only half a percent increase in the fixed orders has uh, uh, helped us retain the margins and improve the profitability percentages. With this, uh, I would uh, invite the um, investors to uh, participate, and then we are glad to answer any questions. Thank you, sir. And uh, I think we can open the floor for uh, questions now, please. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star one at, on the touch tone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Okay. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. A reminder to all participants: you may press star one to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Pratik from Mumura. Please go ahead. Hello. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, uh, one thing that I observed was your gross margin improved uh, QOQ and YOI. Like, like QOQ also it improved by about 380 basis points. Any particular reason that you would like point out uh, for the gross margin increase? And is this sustainable? Like, what what should be the sustainable gross margin number that we should look at? Okay. Yeah. Uh, we'll discuss the CFO to talk on this first, and then uh, I will take it. Uh, thank you for the question. Actually, uh, our chairman is uh, directly monitoring the products which are to be sold, high-profit margin products. And then we are discretionary in taking over the orders, and also uh, the the product mix has contributed to a higher margin in the current quarter. Yeah, I would like to add actually a few lines here. As you know, well, there are two ways actually to improve your profit margins. One is increase actually the price at which you sell in the market. Other one is reduce the cost. Since we have been, uh, you know, that we have been working from home only except for the last two months that that we are coming to the office, it becomes easier for me to spend more time on both. One actually on the market through Zoom, and the other one actually talking with our own people how exactly to reduce the cost. Both have been happening. And earlier, I now used to talk on a day-to-day -day basis with my marketing team, which really has happened actually during this COVID disruption. As uh, CFO put it, since I was able to involve in the whole process of actually marketing. Starting from actually production to marketing, we were in a position to achieve better gross margins. Okay, so sir, what kind of uh, like number should we look at uh, going forward for the gross margin? 
any guidelines like we are very sure that we would be able to maintain the current one and going forward you know i want to be actually uh, one issue which is very very important this is happening in the current market if i have to expand as you know well actually the base effect also has come close beyond the 1000 crore and we are sure of doing good business in some of the best markets of south america but again if we have to create a differentiated business model and we need to make a trip which means the travel restrictions has to be lifted otherwise we are sure of maintaining the numbers which we have given now which we, which which we have achieved if if you are in a position to actually travel and work in the market you are sure of achieving better results okay and then how much of our uh, raw material is imported does the does the import depend on china if you if you have yeah. it I, d- i would like to tell because most of the time we used to tell this one our business model is totally different from china when most of the people are importing the raw materials from china we are exporting formulation from china to latin america as we have a front end we have a front end presence there so we have not been importing much compared to other actually peers the exact quantum i don't remember our main business is more of formulation export from china to south america okay thank you and then uh, w- w- what is the component of us sales for this quarter i mean is, is uh, the request the coo actually to talk on that mm-hmm. the split uh, right now is 90% uh, row and 10% us it hasn't changed too much uh, from last quarter we see this trend uh, continuing towards the end of the year as well okay okay thank you all well done thank, thank you very much thank you the next question is from the line of ashish agarwal from pareto capital please go ahead uh thank you good evening uh, sir so good i evening. had a question uh, with respect to uh, the the emergency sale that we had recorded in 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 the latam markets in the last two quarters now i noticed that in the press release you mentioned that the those emergency sales have been completed so do you see your top line getting impacted on account of that in the q3 and how much was the uh, contribution in q2 for those sales to be honest uh, with you the quantum is not very high and the advantage that created because of this emergency sale is people have especially the moh in all these countries have tested our product and found out our the quality of the product although it will take little time for us to register products in mexico and uh, brazil mm-hmm. this is something you know acted as in acted in favor of us to understand about the company and its products then this is not going to impact in a big way because the quantum is very low as i told you for second in course of speech i mentioned about actually the sudden development which has been taking place in venezuela we used to export in the region of like 300 to 400000 dollar to you in venezuela which has increased to 1.5 million in the in every month 1.5 million every month and that to the money is coming up front even now like 1 1.5 million is in the form of advance so if something happens in one market there is another market to compensate actually that one so we are not worried about the current actually growth if you have to increase the growth in many folds then of course you know the opening up the mark borders of the countries travel restrictions have to be lifted that's it sure thank you uh, this uh, you mentioned about venezuela suddenly uh, you know having seen an exponential growth could you just yeah. dwell into the reasons for that and do you yeah. anticipate that kind you of are, traction you, you are, going? i hope you are aware the crude prices have gone up and you know i think it stands somewhere at 85 right. dollars you know what was the crude price at one point of time if the crude price go up and the best countries to be benefited are the one actually which produces oil our crude Venezuela is one of the country that produces maximum crude actually in the whole of uh, uh, western hemisphere that really helps in fact there was a minus 2.4% growth in the past and now they predict plus 2% for the next year wonderful and uh, okay. and you mentioned your margins obviously you will maintain it possibly expanded going from here 
and if i if i just understand it right i mean uh, the next year you have many plans and products coming on stream so i mean would can we anticipate a very robust revenue growth coming in next year as well i i want to be very realistic because it's true that we are coming up with a lot of plans but as you know well the plans are long term there is nothing in the form of you can complete the projects immediately and then complete the registrations also very fast as you know well the entry barriers in the regulated markets is quite high we are 100% sure that we are going to grow well maybe 2 3 years from now in a big way but the next 2 to 3 years we will have to concentrate more on the row market the advantage is probably our onco tablets will become operational one year from now and there are markets where we have already completed the registrations of onco products by using our company as a loan license in another company that will help, as i told in course of my actually speech that would help us actually to establish our brand presence in central america the same way we have been manufacturing cns and cvs products now we have been registering also this differentiated cns and cvs products again we will start brand marketing for that particular area injectable is one area which you know which has become our major portfolio of uh, products both in terms of regulated markets also for the row you have around 80 to 90 products and out of which 60 70 products have been registered in 8 to 10 countries in latin america so we'll start a hospital division to take care of actually that particular domain so we foresee a good future and i don't want to commit that you know the projects will be completed and we'll be in a position to do it in a big way because of certain reasons where none of us are actually clear about this pandemic to endemic or will there be any other thing which would create issues and we also don't know when exactly the shipments that are going to actually various countries that created actually the transit time and the ocean freight in a differentiated way so when the external factors are not in the position to understand when we are not in the position to understand it the variables get increased so i don't want to give you a commitment i want to be very realistic we will do one and i don't want to give you something you know in the form of like you will do extraordinary one well. we will definitely will do one well. but thanks i just put in one last question so you have a very strong robust cash balance of over 560 crores and you've also been generating strong cash flows and your capex is much lesser than your current cash flows are i mean current cash balance so i mean do you have any plans in terms of you know uh, some special dividend or some buyback i mean what, what is the thought process on those lines yeah in fact to be honest with you it's true that we are open to any meaningful uh, acquisitions that we also tried once when we was ab- and it was about to actually get completed and to their luck and you know they got one product registered and we were about to sign the definitive agreement they backed out this is a api facility us fda facility by an american company now there is one more opportunity of a uk mature factory we are in discussion with them we are always open for this type of meaningful acquisitions this to second coming to dividend we will have to discuss with our board of directors and take a decision that all these projects which have taken up is a question of time before we complete everything some may actually takes one one and a half year some may takes one year after that the registration starts so we are all this is all in right direction is something similar to what the big boys have done it we are trying to emulate actually their standards here be it in the form of product be it in the form of actually facility we are just following it up what the big companies have done what they are currently doing in all these countries where they are making it big we may be in the periphery now we are sure that we will also get into the core in the in the short to medium time got it sure thank you so much wish you all the best and uh, wish you a very happy diwali to you and thank you very much and wish you the same thank you thank you so much thank you so much thank you ladies and gentlemen you may press star 1 to ask a question the next question is from the line of vedika singh from monarch network capital please go ahead uh good evening sir good evening madam 
so can you articulate on the thought process on the CRO business? What are the inroads you are getting from the client side, and what is the outlook on this business? Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you are aware that recently we received a US FDA approval without any observation after they completed the online inspection and on spot inspection. And we are expecting the EAR from uh, US FDA. And we got it actually by using the third party who has filed a dossier in US. And our main purpose of creating the CRO is not to go for actually other, uh, other, other companies' work. We have enough products in the pipeline to do the BBA studies for our own products, mostly in mid sized markets and the bigger markets in the long run. Immediately, we will think of registering maximum products in Chile, Colombia, and uh, Costa Rica, where we know we have very good opportunities to sell the products at a higher cost, although the markets are not as big as US and Brazil and Mexico. So this is more of like 70, 80% we will use it for our own product. Maybe 15, 20% when we have a capacity, we'll use it for other companies too. Is it okay, madam? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, I had another question, sir. Could you please throw some light on what kind of margins can we make on this business? What kind of a margins we can make on? Uh, the CRO business. CRO business, as I told you, uh, margins, we'll have to talk of margins. If I do it completely based on other people's job work, when we do it actually for our own company, it enhances the value to our products. If I'm selling a product, even in a, a smaller geography, say, you know, with a profit of 30, 30, 40%, that will increase by 15, 20% because of the bioequivalence and bioavailability. And the doctor or actually the chemist will look at our products. The moment they understand that it has been actually uh, this has been completed. This complete. This in fact completed the B studies means, which is equivalent to the innovator's molecule. So that will enhance the, uh, the thing. You know, selling capacity of the product. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, can you please throw some more light on how the business is shaping for Kaplan sterilized beyond US, and also by when can we reach the peak potential revenues post the Phase two capex completion. I will ask the COO to give a reply on that. Yeah. So today, 99% uh, of our revenues is from uh, US, and uh, in fact, we are very much focused towards the US. As you all know, over 50% of the entire world's healthcare uh, spend happens in that one uh, country. So obviously, uh, our primary focus is on the US. But at the same time, many of the products that we are getting into now also has a very decent market outside of the US, especially Latin America, Europe, uh, Southeast Asia, etc. So we will be looking at uh, global dossier launches only going forward. While I don't have a set number in place on what would be a split between US and non-US sales, a general thumb rule from uh, predecessor companies, uh, ones that have done well in the past, uh, especially in injectables, this looks to be around the 80-20 kind of a split. Um, when it comes to peak potential, I would like to do, describe it in two manners. Number one is with the pipeline of over 45, 50 ANDAs that we have in our overall uh, development uh, portfolio, we would certainly require uh, most of this uh, CapEx expansion that we are planning on. But that might happen, uh, you know, probably in about uh, four years, five years from now. In the meantime, being uh, under the same FEI number, which is basically the registration number in the U.S., any new line that we add is automatically uh, approved because it comes under the same quality management system. So for the uh, short to midterm, we will be approaching our existing partners and potentially new partners for contract manufacturing business as well in the U.S., which would be a good uh, generator of cash flow also. Uh, until our products start to take up most of our uh, capacities online. So that is the idea going forward. And also when it comes to injectables and sterile products, we will be very differentiated uh, compared to other peers because we will have products in vials, uh, pre-filled syringes, pre-mixed bags, lyophilized vials, and uh, ophthalmic. So 
uh, apart from Ampute, which uh, doesn't really have too much of a market in the, the regulated space, I would say we would uh, pretty much be having the entire uh, basket of offerings when it comes to hospital-related products. Okay, sir. Thank you so much, sir. That's it. Thank you very much, madam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may enter star one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Nikhil from Galaxy International. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for taking my questions. So I have a couple of questions. So one was, one is related to Kathleen Mysteries. So I wanted to understand how much equity stake do we hold in Kathleen Mysteries? So, so is it 99.9 .9 or is it uh, lower uh, than that? So Kaplan uh, Point, the parent company, uh, holds 75% uh, uh, stake. I mean, right now it might look uh, as 99.99, but for all practical purposes, you can assume that eventually uh, the investment partner will hold 25% because it's uh, CCPS. So at the time of exit, it will get converted into a 25% uh, stake for the partner. But as it stands right now with CCPS, so it doesn't uh, really show up. But uh, you can assume that it's a 75-25 kind of uh, uh, breakup. Okay, thanks. Uh, second point on this one is that uh, Captain Mr. Ives actually made a loss after deducting all the R&D expenses and all uh, for last year, right? So FY21, we had a loss. So when do we expect that uh, Captain Mr. Ives will be able to turn a profit? Uh, let's say based on the current plan, uh, given that we are in a huge investment phase. So will it be a little more uh, time or uh, maybe in FY22 or 23 would be in profit? Any view? So we want to uh, take it one step at a time. The uh, next target for us is to make sure that uh, we achieve a cash flow break even uh, that we feel could happen within, uh, within next year itself. But when it comes to overall uh, profitability, we are probably uh, another two years away. And that is specifically to do with the number of filings that we do because uh, we charge off all of our R&D expenses and stuff. This uh, mm -hmm. constantly, uh, you know, when it comes to a pure uh, p &L, uh, point of view, it becomes a drag on our uh, bottom line. But this is uh, 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 an industry where it's a long gestation uh, period. And once, uh, you know, our right kind of product mix and once our uh, slightly more complex products start to get approved, then there's no looking back for us. And today, if you let me let me add a few words actually you know, here. It may look like a, a big challenge. It's true, it's a challenge. But again, you know, if you can handle this challenge effectively, this is going to open up a great opportunity. The reason being, if you look at this space, there are very few people of our size who are into actually injectables, especially to USA with the A and DS of our own. Even in two, three companies which have got the USFP approval, it's more of actually OEM. They are, in, they are totally depending on contract manufacturing. Today, injectable facility for US market is something like actually an infrastructure project. We have to invest a lot, wait for a long time. What is important actually is the wherewithal. Today, we are not, we are not borrowing money from any institution and we are not leveraging the debt. Everything has come from the internal uh, accruals. And of course, the 25 percent which they were invested, they've been after us, and then eventually they gave us a very good actually a deal in the form of for a pre-revenue facility, they valued close to 900 crore, and we have also accepted it. So we are very confident that there's going to be a great opportunity. Maybe it's a question of few years from now. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you want to ask on this? No, I'm uh, I'm pretty clear. So I'm also going to go about the U.S. entire business, Thank the way the products are moving actually. So and the partnership Thank that you have, so it's uh, definitely great. Um, so just uh, maybe a little more question. So we see. Um, so in the press release, it was mentioned that we have 45 NDAs that are under development, right? So I just wanted to understand, let's say the breakup of those NDAs, because I also saw that uh, five of those uh, NDAs that we are looking to file are in the ophthalmic range. But I don't understand. I don't think that uh, we have a manufacturing facility for uh, ophthalmic products. So, first question is that uh, from an ophthalmic product perspective, would we be actually doing contract, uh, getting the products contract manufactured, or is there any plan for uh, doing it in house? 
And second thing is that on an overall 45 NDA basis, so if you can have some breakup, let's say simple products, complex of so injectables, so that we are talking about. You are also doing some liposomal or uh, amphotericin and some of these uh, other complex products. So what would be the kind of uh, ratio or mix of those? You know, the development timeline, complexity, and the investments is also very, very significantly different, as is the returns. Yeah, so we actually do have a uh, ophthalmic line in the uh, in the same facility where our injections are being made. It is actually called as line three, and we've had it for the last uh, two two odd years, more than two years actually. Now we've already signed the uh, and up from this uh, line. We were supposed to get an FDA audit sometime uh, early last year, but because of uh, COVID, that hasn't happened. But we are expecting that sometime in the in the near future. So yes, uh, we don't do any. Uh, we don't get our product contract manufactured outside. Everything is done in-house. That would answer your question. In terms of the complexity of products, see, as we speak today, we have close to 24, 25 products that are ready for scale-up and exhibit. Now, because we only have uh, two uh, uh, wire lines, it, uh, we need to do the right kind of balance between launching our existing uh, products, continue to uh, you know focus on our revenues and cash flow, while at the same time also make sure that we have a healthy pipeline of products uh, coming in for the next year and the year after that. So, um, to answer your question, I would say that you know probably three out of every ten products that we do are complex in nature. But they might be complex by way of manufacturing, development, by way of scarcity of uh, API, etc. So, uh, in many uh, uh, areas, you have you could have complexities in terms of US uh, products. When it comes to ophthalmics, our overall pipeline out of the 45, uh, around nine products uh, are in ophthalmic space. So you could say that uh, the injectable is obviously our uh, our uh, higher area of focus. But because ophthalmics are also manufactured in a similar manner, because they're all sterile uh, liquids as well, uh, mm -hmm. it would be useful to have uh, another space, in, uh, sorry, another manufacturing line in the same space as well. Right, definitely. So um, thanks uh, for that. So just uh, follow up on that. So out of these 45 NDAs that are under development, so are we saying that uh, almost everything is injectable plus ophthalmic, or is there some oral capsules, IR, ER, XR kind of things? So, that we are not doing. So, so this plant, we only do sterile products, so it is all uh, injectables and ophthalmics. Uh, when it comes to our new expansion project, that is our oncology space and stuff, we are getting into uh, oral solid dosages in the in the first phase, and then uh, injectable oncology injectable in the second uh, phase. Right, and you are also setting up the PFS as well as the line for that, as the, as the Mr. Chairman was right. talking all about. All of that uh, falls under Kaplan sterile. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, besides this, uh, if uh, if I can take the liberty and maybe ask uh, one or two questions on Kaplan. Uh, please, please, uh, Kaplan. please, please, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Right. Um, sir, I just wanted to understand. Right. Uh, so we are uh, insourcing a lot of formulations from China. Right, and actually exporting it to Latin America through our own distribution channel. Has we faced any problems in terms of supplies from China, given that uh, there are issues right now? While I understand that formulation may not be, let's say, impacted to that extent, so it is still uh, your views and inputs on that. So that is question one. Yeah. So far, so good, except the issues that we face in India, you know, in the form of uh, wash and freight and the transit time. This is one of the same. Today, the freights have actually become very, very high. It's not only confined only to India, it's also happening in China. And the second issue yeah. is, uh, Timelines, I would say, you know, in fact, it's lesser from China to South America. The third issue, they are now talking of uh, power cut and other things. But, how, in fact, our office people have been telling us that it's not going to impact us in a big way because we are not manufacturing with smaller companies. The products that is being manufactured from the bigger companies, they always manufacture the products for one year at a time. In fact, this was being taken care of actually by Mr. Vivek at one point of time. He'll be able to throw some light on that. Vivek, go ahead and tell them how exactly the structure operates in China. Yeah, so uh, I think uh, as, as is always the case, uh, when it comes to pharma and food, uh, these industries are given first reference when it comes to allocation of power. 
So uh, most of our suppliers, they are top three, top five companies in China. So they've been able to manage their resources very well. Uh, so as Kevin was saying, so far so good. We've not seen any sort of uh, um, you know slowdown or delays or anything like that. But the more important point is we at all points during the year have four to five months, sometimes even six months worth of uh, ready stock at China. Now, because most of the products that we do, uh, almost all the products that we do have 36 month shelf life, this is uh, something that we can afford to have. And the more interesting part of this is we don't pay a single dollar as uh, an advance to any of these stocks. So our clock starts ticking only after we ship the goods out and then we pay them 60 days to 80 days from the date of uh, the shipment. So because we play, plan so much in advance, we've not really faced too much of an issue in terms of uh, uh, you know, uh, non-availability or scarcity of uh, uh, product or anything like that. But we uh, watch this space very, very closely. Obviously, there is no such thing uh, as, you know, we know everything about the markets or, or, or and all that. But having our direct presence at the, uh, you know, country definitely uh, throws a bit more light compared to uh, what we read and hear about in the media and stuff every day. So, we are very careful. We watch uh, closely. We interact with our uh, partners on a on a almost daily basis to make sure that we're not uh, uh, left suffering at any point. And I would like to add one more thing here: the transit time, as I told you before, which has been actually you know increased from 30, 30 to forty days to three months. Today, what is considered as actually an issue, which will become a great opportunity, maybe after one or two years when the export of vaccines gets reduced. We used to have seven to eight million dollars in the form of actually, you know, stocks in transit. Today it has increased to 20, 22 million, which means what will happen, you know? Suppose if we get actually an additional cash flow of some 200 crore for the current year, when the issues get worse, when the issues in the form of actually, you know, this uh, transit time which is happening because of the export of vaccine, when that gets reduced, then automatically the lead time will get reduced, which means the opportunity for having another 100, 125 crore for that particular year as a cash increase is a real opportunity, is at least for sure. As these stocks which are next to the market, next to the customers, will get actually encashed very fast. That's how last year now we made more money compared to the previous years. Last year, if you look at our balance sheet, you know, we had an excess cash of 300 crore. This kind of a situation will happen one day when this lead time gets compressed. Yes, please. Yeah, sure, sir. Sure, I understand that. Um, uh, so just another follow-up question on the China thing. So when we are doing the, or let's say, importing from the Chinese combination companies, uh, so do we have a backup from the Indian companies also, given that India generally also has a lot of uh, good manufacturing uh, capability and formulations? Can you please come again, sir? I'm sorry, I am unable to hear it, hear it properly. Can you yeah, um, sir, uh, yeah, uh, sir I, what I was asking was that, uh, let's say we are importing from China, from the Chinese top players. Do we have a backup uh, supplier from India for most of our big formulations that we are exporting? Okay. See, this is definitely, you know, we always keep a backup. And the, but the, again, you know, I would like to convey one important thing. Today, 70% of the raw materials are imported to India from China. So, which means anything that, you know, we, will have, we are sure that we are all actually interested in getting into key starting material, intermediate and API. That's the only way, you know, we can go for an import substitution which cannot happen overnight. And in our case, I would say this is much, much actually better than an importer of raw materials because this is export of products from China to South America is like an export of any other person from, import of any other person from South America. So that's not going to be impacted, definitely. Even if that happens, we are sure we'll be in a position to do it in India. And uh, I am sure this is not going to happen just like that because the dependence of raw material, especially the key starting material and intermediate is quite high in the area of pharmaceuticals in India. And the whole world depends on the key starting material, uh, whether we like it or not, that's a fact of life. So 
it's better to be an exporter of formulation from china to south america which will not impact because you know even if there is some issue between india and china they is not going to impact actually the uh, export of products from china to south america thank you uh, mr nikhil uh, may we request uh, that you return to the question queue for follow up question as there are several participants waiting for their turn the next question is from the line of harshal patel from shirkan please go ahead uh uh good evening sir thanks for the opportunity uh, so just have uh, some couple of questions uh, basically with respect to uh, first uh, the capex spend sir if you could just share what is it that we planned up for fy 22 and 23 uh as i told you before the one project which will become operational in 22 23 is our anco tablets right and initially that we will be in a position to export to the existing markets where we have completed the registration and the rest of the products is more of actually a work in progress and uh, most of the machineries for this project you know have to come from uh, germany and italy and the lead time for importing this machinery itself is between uh, 15 to 18 months sometimes you know very narrow one or two machines can come in 12 to 15 months so that means we don't foresee any project other than this anco tablets and all to go on stream in 2021 to 2023 okay okay uh, then so- uh, there is one opportunity for so if you acquire a company in the form of a uh, even organic growth then there is an opportunity for us to get into some uh, regulated markets okay okay uh, so the onco tablets what can be the investments uh, you know if if if, if you can just give some flavor of uh, what yeah. See, the onco tablets the facility where we are going to house onco tablet is a place where we will also install injectable machinery in the second phase as a whole it would cost us 100 crore but the first way first phase will be in the region of 60 to 65 crore okay okay got that sir uh, okay. and okay yeah. uh, okay uh so uh, my next question uh, basically was uh, sir in the uh, q1 call we had uh, you know uh, mentioned of some guidances and some growth outlook wherein we said that uh, you know we would be looking at doubling some uh, revenues from the latam over the next 5 years and also look to touch about 100 million dollars of revenues from us over the next 5 years so sir considering this developments and changes uh, do we stick to this guidance now is it or any change yes yeah. we are very sure about it 5 years from now or 6 years from now we are sure of doubling our sales which is definitely a possibility okay got that sir and uh, lastly sir with the mexico and brazil thing that like you said of course uh, subject to uh, you know kind of uh, Uh, removal of travel restrictions, but uh, would it be safe that uh, safe to assume that FY23 we could look at some bit of uh, nominal revenues flowing in from Mexico and post that maybe sometime in 24 from Brazil? This is the only issue. Like when I say, even if they lift the travel restrictions, we must be in a yeah. position to work in the market. If right. one is reaching the country, other one is entering the market. by reaching the country we don't get business only when we work in the market we will be in a position to create a market differentiation today what's happening all the big companies they you know they go for the uh, creamy layer in the sense you know because of their uh, extensive reach in the form of starting from key starting material actually to the front end persons they are able to control actually the prices and they are in a position to get into the tender where you know it's not easy for us to compete at this juncture we are also trying to create everything the way in which actually the big boys have done it but it takes it will definitely take at least three four years for us to reach to a cap until that period we have to concentrate more on the private market when we go for the private market again there we look to look at the tier 2 and tier 3 markets where the profitability will be more although the volumes are lesser 
which means one of us actually have to go and work in the market. These are things you now which has to be created by us because we only know how we have created the differentiation in South American markets, although their markets are smaller. At the end of the day, Mexico is very close to Central America. It's just one hour drive by fl- one hour actually by flight from Guatemala to Mexico. We are, I've been to Mexico several times. And uh, the only issue today is the COVID uh, pandemic, which, of course, I'm not in a position to commit to know when exactly we'll be able to do something in that particular market. We are positive. It's not going to go like this forever. The pandemic has become endemic. And there's a question of maybe one year after that, you know, we'll be in a position to work in the market also without any hassle. Got it. Got it. Got it. Thank you. So... Yeah, yeah, uh, that's it from my side, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pritam Moitra, individual investor. Please go ahead. Am I audible? Hello? Your line is unmuted. Yes, sir. Please, go ahead. please, please. Yeah. Uh, so uh, my I had just one question. Uh, so yeah, at at the current uh, portfolio and uh, the current markets, which uh, Kathleen Point is, uh, how many years does uh, Kathleen Point see a uh, so-called saturation point? You mean uh, you want us to know? You want to us to tell us about the saturation point in the current uh, uh, markets? Where we are current today. market as well as the portfolios. Uh, suppose uh, that you are not expanding to any uh, new market and uh, you don't want to, uh, let's say, innovate uh, new products. So how how long would, would uh, something like that last? What, what Vivekananda said is expansion is life, contraction is death. We don't actually believe in saturation. When you go to a market, there are so many ways actually to do business as you know well. And first, we, go, we the priority is to get into actually markets where, you know, we will make uh, sustainable actually revenues. And that comes in the form of generic business. If you look at actually U.S. to the smaller markets, it is the generic that really sells a lot. But the only difference is generic in ROW, you will see Tom, Dick, and Harry, where, you know, whereas in U.S. you cannot see, you know, small player or a mid-sized companies to enter into U.S. but to into injectables. So the current market is true, the generic also, as we increase the number of generics and more of our complex and specialized product, there is a space. One is a generic, then branded generic, then brand marketing. And it becomes easy for us to get into brand marketing without even having deeper pockets because of the fact the geography is smaller. If you take uh, onco oncologist in a market like uh, the biggest market and the biggest revenue earner up for Kathleen Point is uh, Gautamala. The population is 15 to 16 million. The number of oncologists, uh, maximum, maximum is 50 to 55. To make this 50 to 55 oncologists, you just need one representative. And that one medical representative who take us from India, or take from India it becomes all the more easier because people who have already met the oncologist in India, what, is, what they need is only one interpreter who has to work with them. In the same way, CNS and CVS products, as I told you, currently CNS products and CVS products, there is an increase. The maximum amount of uh, the diseases that surfaces in the world, first it is uh, oncology, I'm sorry, onco, uh, I mean uh, cancer patients, followed by CNS and CVS, these two areas. And CNS and CVS, again, is a specialist area, and the number of doctors are few and far between in the geographies where we are today. So we are opening up that area. We are already in uh, regulated markets with injectables, and we also have our presence in ROW injectables also. All put together, that itself actually creates a basket of more than 100 products. So when you go for actually 50 to 100 products in this market, the moment we complete the registration of 50, 60 injectables, that opens up an avenue of reaching to the hospitals, private hospitals and clinics who dispense the injectables. 
so like this what is important at the end of the day is the model that we create there is nothing in the form of saturation i think saturation i don't it's very difficult for me to understand the concept of saturation maybe there will be a saturation but that time when a product gets saturated you know to move to the next product or the next level of marketing that's what i feel if you want to ask any other questions please ask me sir uh, uh one last question uh, sir uh, you say that uh, the shipping costs have uh, gone up by like four times so uh, how much uh, how much of your net sales does it uh, eat up exactly it doesn't see this is the advantage that we have today if i go and actually appoint an importer like most of the companies of our size then all these problems persist and they exist also the reason is my importer will say that you know so and so company from india and so and so company from china has come here and told us i see that will sell the product at a lesser rate but when we have become our own importers which means you know we are controlling an end to end business model in the countries where we are present today and there is an increase we have an opportunity in the form of actually present next to the customer with a huge range of products when we increase the products price they will not actually question us because any product which is going to be available in that part of the world has to be increased or you know either you will increase the product and survive or you will actually vanish from the market because you cannot sell at a low prices if you sell at a low price at a time when you are actually cost at which you manage the company is increased how is it possible for it to survive so what is important again is the model actually which helps you not the product here especially in generics thank you thank you very much as there are no further questions from the participants i now the hand over the conference to mr vivek pratiban from kaplan point laboratories for closing remarks thank you uh, vinith and uh, thanks to all that have participated in uh, uh, in the earnings call and uh, we do hope that uh, we stay in touch for future interactions as well and we wish you all a very happy and prosperous uh, diwali and a safe diwali thank you thank you so much and uh, wish you all actually a safe and uh, healthy diwali thank you thank you very much thank you on behalf of monarch network that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines